Hi, everybody. My name is Jahara. I am the founder of The Nest IO, and I have with me some amazing startup founders, all from The Nest. And we thought we'd, uh, you know, in these challenging times with COVID-19, uh, large businesses and small ones are all going through a very difficult time. Uh, but, you know, startups, for some reason, some of them find ways around the problems. It's because they're small that they come up with new ideas on how to pivot and still continue to survive. It's more difficult for large businesses because they have far too many structures, barriers that they have to think about. So now let's hear from each one of you on what you're doing now. How have you pivoted to help with the current situation? So let's start with you, Hajra. Okay. So hi, everyone. Um, so basically, I'm the co-founder of Art of Travel. And um, like Jahan said, we are all about creating meaningful, transformational travel experiences. At Art of Travel, uh, before COVID-19 hit us uh, pretty badly, I think uh, we were designing, we were uh, focused on creating novel, transformational, culturally immersive and activity rich experiences for everyone. Um, now, um, so one of our primary customer bases was corporate, uh, local corporate organizations. And whenever we would go to them, they had one need that uh, along with our travel experiences where we would give them amazing adventure and cultural experiences, they would ask for an element of team building. And when it came to that, we weren't as amazing as we were with culture and adventure and the other aspects of travel. So, uh, so back in January, 2020, we, in order to answer this need, we partnered with the world's leading um, network of team building organizations around the world. It's called Catalyst. And because of that, we created a diversification in our portfolio. So we were now not just doing travel, but also team building. So because of that, um, when COVID-19 hit us, I think from early February only, we were getting queries about cancellation from our, um, not just from foreigners, but also from our local corporate clientele. Everybody was like, what's the refund policy and all of that. So we spent all of um, February and pretty much all of March refunding everybody. And then afterwards we were pretty let down because it was supposed to be a really good um, year for travel for Pakistan. And then we thought, hey, this, this shouldn't be the end. And we were like, if we can create, if we've been creating these experiences physically, how about we work with our partners from uh, who are like in 80 countries, we can work with them. And how about we bring some of these experiences online? So with Catalyst Global, we had a, pro we have a portfolio of over 120 products that people can work with. And it's, uh, it's like team building engagement. And we are now working to bring all of that virtually online. So um, in the beginning, when we started, we did a survey. We wanted to find if people would be interested in it. And they were like, hey, um, we're, this is not our priority at the moment. But now that the lockdown seems to be like it's going to stretch for we don't know how long, these um, corporates are sort of realizing that it's not just a luxury. It's human connection is like one of our basic needs and for their employees to feel connected, whether it's remotely or virtually or however, it's very important. So we've been getting a lot of a response for these remote products. Okay, thank you, Hajra. So next, how about we go to Mustafa? Mustafa, fitness, I mean, you really need to be in a space with your <laughs> trainer, right? How yeah. have you pivoted your uh, startup, FitMap? so that people can use it remotely. Yeah, so um, the good thing is that uh, this was something like, we were working on a product like this before uh, anyway. So how we pivoted was first embracing the digital way. Um, we saw that a lot of trainers and everyone as well, they were moving on to digital training because, well, they didn't have a choice anyway either and they had to keep their lights on, their businesses, all the gym owners, everything. So they did go, um, into giving actual like Zoom classes. So there are lots of these Zoom classes happening. Companies worldwide, you know, all these gyms and everything, they are giving that. So everyone has moved into digital like training. So that's something that we're facilitating as well. 
So a few key things that we thought initially was also before even the pandemic happened, we thought that how can we reach out and um, you know reach out to people that are not within the country or within this where the trainers are, people from remote places, how can they actually train as well? So we thought, yeah, digital classes, that's the way to go. There were a few companies that were already doing something like this, but they weren't as successful at that time. But now because of this, obviously, that's the only thing um, that is left. So uh, that was something that we decided that, yes, we can leverage on as well. And um, now what we're doing is we're purely focusing on community building. So again, our model was to facilitate all these gym owners into getting more clientele and creating another streamline of revenue for them. So we're doing the same thing just with digital now. So we're promoting them everywhere. But our main focus right now, instead of profits or sales, is community building. So we would want to help them out because gym owners have closed. They're facing a lot of problems because uh, most of you know, the gyms, they actually don't own the property. They're renting the properties and everything as well. So how are they going to pay rent? How are they going to, you know, keep their lights on or, you know, earn that bread and butter if they don't have any customers coming in? So how do we help them? How do we facil like facilitate these guys? So the first thing was that, okay, we collaborate with them in whatever capacity we can. Um, you know, we'll help them with sales and marketing. Will help them with customer acquisition even for digital clients um so and the key thing with this was that we go to our first go to their loyal customers and go to our loyal customers so reaching out to these guys and making sure that you know we actually are in touch with them and um you know because the loyal customers are essentially the champions of any business and they will be the first ones to help you keep those lights on so even for us, um, we're focusing mostly on B2B right now. So even our B2B clients, they, they're actually helping us a lot as well. We're going beyond our initial offerings to you know, help them or give them even more than what we had offered. And then we're collaborating with these see, different trainers. Do you see a lot of them sort of helping their teams to buy into these courses right now online? Have you seen, a, you know, have you seen people actually are using the gym facilities online you know Absolutely. learning how to perhaps learning movements learning exercises you know how to keep active while they're locked down all that kind yeah, of stuff absolutely, absolutely. Yeah? because um what's happening april first and foremost to all these fitness fanatics they need to you know they need the gym they really need it so for them because they don't have access to it they definitely will come back obviously out of 100 people you'll have about like 30 to 40 coming back but um, apart from that, even people, you, you know, you're, you're confined about social distancing. So, you know, for you, you need some sort of like catharsis or you need like a change from your usual routine. So even people who aren't, you know, um, and, you know, and even for a lot of people, because now it's Ramzan, so they think Ramzan is time to lose weight. And losing weight also means working out. So how can we work out? Yes, okay, what's our, um, you know, we can work out from the comfort of our own home and have all these trainers train us and everything. And what's even better is it's become cheaper now. So your digital classes are actually cheaper. So the same trainers that were charging, say, 30,000 rupees, they're charging 10,000 rupees to train you. And that too, okay, personal one-on-one. Great. One -on -one. great. Uh, so, Nadia, FanPro. So many women entrepreneurs <clears throat> suddenly find that they don't have a market and, you know, you've been the champion for home-based women entrepreneurs for so long. You've just been recognized again by Facebook and they've published the story of FemPro. Tell us, uh, I saw that you've, uh, you know, you're doing something new to support these women during these rough times. Let's hear all about it. Uh, thank you, Jahan, firstly, for having me on the panel. Uh, so for me, it's it's not exactly a pivot because all these years in the past, we were, uh, you know, working online. We were telling women to go online. This FEMPRO was, you know, an initiative where we were bringing them offline. So, you know, and we had a number of trainings, offline trainings, events and workshops that we planned. Some were on our own, some were with partners throughout 2020. And especially a lot of them were a plan for March, given that it's Women's History month and you know and it's there are all these women's celebrations and all and so uh, something like COVID-19 hitting was not expected it, it was kind of sudden 
but given the fact that we already had sort of a background and i knew ke online how things work so uh, firstly uh, we had to suddenly stop um, the recordings for all like new courses and content that we were making because it involved going to the studio jo hum you know what we are working with uh, other women for the she inspires stories that again meant going to their homes or on spot locations so we we kind of paused that we took a month to plan to think to re-strategize and to change things around so now what we've done is um, during this period we took up a number of initiatives to support the women entrepreneurs because a feb to um, may before ramzan is actually the exhibition season and that's where a lot of women have created a lot of inventory and they sell through these offline events so this covid hit bad uh, as it is and the lockdown sales were affected um, and they small sellers they don't have enough resources to sustain so we started channelizing our energies towards that we asked women to offer any e vouchers uh, you know gave some of them one on one consultations we did some very closed uh, sessions also for just limited women uh, that you know they should start they can they can offer gift cards or e vouchers today which they can uh, fulfill later now that lockdowns over uh, we have these threads promoting women entrepreneurs uh, again i had uh, some ad credit that had been given to me uh, for promoting fempro and and basically for my ad account i took special permission and we are sharing that ad credit with women entrepreneurs so facebook we ad are, credit yeah so we are putting up these ads uh, for them which we direct to their pages for some there are brand awareness ones for some they are those that have websites their traffic um, you know objective uh, but they're absolutely free of cost we are doing it through my ad credit and a uh, fempros platform but redirecting to their pages so that at least uh, those that are operational can generate sales and others can at least that their brand awareness can be built so we've been doing these small little things um, and other than that now we've planned these online trainings because we never wanted to do these online zoom trainings it was always about you know a bite sized trainings do at your own pace and offline events but now we have these a set of trainings planned that inshallah we should start after ramzan so a lot of strategizing planning happened at a place and then uh, we've also talking to um, other third party partners to support women throughout uh, this crisis let's say selling platforms and other platforms so that you know that can help them go digital So great. Of Thanks, Nadia. Shahid, you've changed the background. Yeah. <laughs> very colorful <laughs> background with all sorts of things on it. Yeah. So that... Shahid, uh, Tech Tree is always focused on STEM and young children, right? But you're yeah. doing something different right now. So will you tell us all about it? So I put up this background because I wanted to like remind myself of these, you know, old days where we used to sell these products to different schools. and conduct services as well i guess we we are the ones who basically got the major hit from this covid 19 as a one of our investment deal was happening uh, you know just amidst like february and it was about to close but you know it just got for long and apart from that we uh, so we were giving services as well to the school as in our own trainers used to go to the school and conduct these workshops and it was very immersive i'll say hands on experience so uh when 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 this you know actually all of a sudden came and uh, there was one more thing that you know the contract that we signed with the schools was that like whenever we'll be done with the workshops then they are going to pay us so of course it was like you know when the schools you know just schools were like it it was the first market to basically got blew up so when when the schools were no more and they weren't paying us any more so we were like we we didn't know what to do and uh, at first even i was like uh, i was like shocked and you know i i couldn't come up with any solution at the time and uh, we were doing panel discussions to basically generate leads and you know get more schools on board but then you know all of a sudden so uh, for like a week uh, we 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 just thought what to do and you know what not to do and then we were working on a different uh, business plan as in we were making lecture plans to like make it more cheaper and go for the government schools uh we we had to try that so one of my team member you know came up with this idea that how about you know checking all these lecture plans all these lesson plans that we are making for the government schools and basically making cheaper kits to basically you know make uh, this some education in like you know all the parts of the country and we should try these lecture plans through you know basically doing online camp 
and there was one more thing basically in february we were planning online uh, not online basically a summer camp with you know different gym khana and pavilion and club and you know we, we had done all of that we were in talks with pavilion and and you know these different clubs and then when you know we 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 just realized that there won't be any summer camp happening so we thought that how about you know basically uh, testing our lesson plans using uh, using of course you know going online and we'll be sending the kids to um, uh basically the students who are applying for the course at their home and then you know uh, we are going to run that so at first i thought that you know it's it's good to basically do a do a trial for like a couple of weeks so we did with like around 20 students and uh, uh, that what went what kind of kids were they what kind of kids uh, so so the so the age group was defined from like around 6 uh, year 6 years old to 14 years old and amazing like it it was like so exciting to see that the registrations came from places which we uh, i i don't mean to offend those places but still i i never heard about them for example phalia uh, phalia uh, it's somewhere near mandi bahaudin and you know peer shahi and gujarat and uh, i i i guess some places in kpk quetta and you know jam shoro kotri and you know it, it was like very exciting to you know basically see that the market even lies you know in these remote places so we actually after doing that we also you know get uh, some credit from the facebook when we you know put up this uh, this case study that you know this type of camps are like very successful and especially you know bringing people online and you know it's like you know more about digitization facebook gave us uh, some credit to spend over a summer camp or you can say online camp and then we thought that we can actually make up uh, like you know we can come up with such products like you know online subscription based models for like you know these remote people as in uh, instead of you know uh, making schools or making you know uh, making like you know something of more uh, basically concrete and you know mortar uh, we thought that you know we should do these online camps at different places and we are like you know coming up with a, a complete solution which is like around subscription models and you know basically online camps happening in different places of the country so it's it's like it it just like um it's like we struggled at at the front as in in the first few weeks but then you know it it it's like a blessing to us as well so yeah and so were uh, these were these also robotic kits or were they something else uh so no um what we thought was uh, as i mentioned like earlier we thought that you know we should make something like really cheap through which we can like you know especially enunciate these complex topics like for example waves for example like you know projectile motions uh, which students basically they are taught in such a way that most of the students basically lose their interest so we thought that we should you know basically make really cheap kits uh, basically using scraps and popsicle sticks and you know all different type of stuff uh so that you know we we can we, it, it it was a pain like you know it it was a pain since the very beginning of tech tree that we were just you know targeting the uh, i'll say the elite niche of the country and we wanted to like you know uh, take in deeper and solve the problem uh, like you know in, in in like you know it 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 shouldn't be a, it shouldn't be something for privileged people right so we we were all, already making such kits which were like really cheap and we wanted to test that and this basically covid 19 gave us the perfect opportunity to do that and we did it like very successfully and uh, the the ex, uh, the experience and especially i'll i'll share um, like you know those uh, uh, the testimonials that the parents gave they were like amazing and we we it, it was like you know so heartwarming that you know we we thought that we can actually make it a product and especially if we have to touch base like these cities like you know jang shahi and uh, you know uh, mandi bahaudin and palia uh, i guess this is the best option that we can go for okay great amna this is a very challenging time absolutely for a lot of us <laughs> most <laughs> of us yes for most of us and yeah. i remember the first three or four days i was more or less a totally you know like a zombie i just yeah. didn't know what to do with yeah. myself because yeah, if i absolutely. couldn't get up in the morning and come to the nest and do all the things that i I'm used to doing and yeah. be around people then I didn't know what to do. So yeah. mental health is very important in such circumstances and you mm -hmm. have been a champion for that for for a long time. Yeah. So tell me how did you pivot what did you do I mean you must have expanded not really pivoted yeah. but what did you do to help people through this situation? Yeah. So um first of all thank you Jaha for having me on the panel. Um 
we were actually looking at the news already because of the glo- it was a global pandemic and the world health organization released this um article saying that there are physically a few people will be affected in terms of the number of population there is but majority of the people will be affected by covid-19 uh, mentally and that is very true because of the stress and the panic that comes within because when it started in pakistan everyone was in a panic mode right like um in a flight or fight zone whether we go to the offices whether we go to the schools or not whether we continue our work what do we do how do we go about it how do we even go to grocery stores do we wear masks gloves sanitize ourselves come back so it was an entire process that we were supposed to go through so that all takes a toll on your mental health and we were looking at the statistics and everything and we are already online so it wasn't a pivot for us but rather an expansion and it was a very good opportunity for us to tell people that virtually um you can seek help you can get therapy and it will be as effective as it is fa- in face to face therapy right however we also realized that there are a lot of people who do not need an entire one hour therapy session and just need some quick tips and tricks to how to navigate through the situation of panic and stress that they're feeling at this point along with the job uncertainty for a lot of people because they didn't know they'll have their jobs or not especially in the tourism industry and other industries that are affected very glo- uh, largely with it right so um what we decided to do was to launch our 15 minute free virtual counseling sessions and our psychologists and therapists were like very i'm very grateful to them to donate their time for which we were able to like expand that service not to just to people who can afford therapy but for everyone around the world and the result has been phenomenal we didn't just get people from pakistan who were taking those therapy sessions um uh, there were people from seven different countries that are taking these free virtual clinic sessions right now we've been able to conduct more than 500 of these therapy sessions with them um the result has been amazing a lot of uh, corporates who were not interested in testing this out because it's a mental health and everyone is confused at this point in time right they want to incorporate that in their agenda but they don't know how especially in the pakistani market now they're showing their interest in it as well so we've been conducting a lot of corporate webinars uh with different companies on how to manage stress for their employees uh talking about their well-being about their meditation and how just giving them different techniques to stay sane during this covid crisis right um then it's it's been a journey for us as well because i w- i was seeing a lot of people just looking at um facebook and everything that everyone is just bored out of quarantine and we were like overloaded with work because there was so much to do and there was so much to help around with people and then we uh we were also contacted by a pharmaceutical and they wanted to support us in the cause um and that really helped us you know get the word out more because we were able to market it to a bigger audience and reach out to more uh, people then facebook also supported us with with their ad credits so that really helped us and we really want to continue doing this um therapy sessions for as long as the pandemic is there and even after that because it's not a one day story once the pandemic ends the after effects will still be there so we would just want to make sure that we are still for there for them and people still have the help that they need yeah great thanks a lot amna yeah. last but not least we have azib mm-hmm. from med angle so azib you were already providing so much medical knowledge on your platform but basically for medical students right and now Correct. suddenly this pandemic happens and i've seen the the new area that you have created with all the statistics will you tell us a little more about what you've done and how you think this would help all right so thanks again for having me john and for those who don't know me i'm dr razib i'm a designer a programmer and also founder founder of medangle so basically what's interesting about covid-19 and this whole uh, global health crisis is that overnight educational institutions they kind of vaporize right one day a kid is sitting in school and is used to having a teacher or professor teaching them kind of conveying information to them and then the next morning or the next day that's gone for everyone almost in the whole world that's why zoom has seen such a crazy amount of increase in traffic right so education globally right now is disrupted so we've already been providing online education so for pakistan specifically we uh it wasn't really a pivot for us it was more of an expansion but we actually opened up our platform for free we stopped charging all the users we made it completely free for everyone who is a medical student because we 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 kind of want to promote medical education in Pakistan 
to promote Pakistan medical excellence and in general, uh, good information and education for future doctors. Right, so we, we haven't stopped that. Instead, we just made it free and we're allowing as many medical students as possible to get access to that so that they can learn and make use of their uh, corona lockdown time, right? But on the other hand, uh, we also, at the same time, we built and developed our own COVID platform internally. And what this really is, is that we're already pretty competent in medical education and information, right? MedAngle makes medical information and education simpler for uh, medical students. So we thought, why not do the same thing for COVID-19 information? So we did exactly that. So we built our own platform and then we used a lot of new technologies that we wanted to kind of utilize and we did that. So data visualization, uh, a stronger back end, a stronger front end. So we did all that, but then our core competency is our wonderful team of you know really, really smart and brilliant doctors and students. And uh, there's a lot of misinformation out there right now, right? Uh, people have heard about those WhatsApp chain messages and you know their relatives telling them this cure or that cure, just random information that's not necessarily scientific or even good to listen to, <laughs> right? It could be even downright harmful and malicious. So our team, we, we understand medical uh, information. So we take the drug dates, the new clinical trials, basically all the news and updates that's occurring in COVID-19, and we merge that with data, visual, with data viz on our platform so you can see all the cases and like what's going on in different countries and so forth. But also you can come to our platform and understand what's new and what's going on with COVID-19, right? A lot of people are, uh, they're stressed out, they're confused, there's so much information and stuff that's harmful. So we wanted to basically bring some sanity and some clarity to what's going on. So our, our platform has drug updates, like I said, clinical updates, uh, whatever is going on in COVID-19 that's really relevant for the general population. And like obviously not just medical students, but any person really. Uh, MedAngle is basically facilitating them for, basically we're facilitating anyone who wants to learn more about COVID-19 and medical education and information in general. And what has the response been like? Have you oh, seen been, a general increase in uptake? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, our, our, our platform has gotten, uh, I think, close to 1,000 signups for medical students. And uh, we're, we're, like, we're temporarily kind of like growing slowly so we can kind of uh, handle the new traffic. Uh, but then our outreach has been great. Like we made some videos, we have, we have some great social media stuff going on. So in general, a lot of people have definitely checked out uh, our, our, our platform, our social media pages, and uh, people have said, and people ask us questions and people got answers and they lear they've learned through us. And that's basically what we're here for is that we want people to learn and understand what's going on, but not in, in a really uh, sane way, right? So don't learn from random people who uh, probably don't have your best interest at heart, or maybe they're telling you the wrong thing. Learn from a team of medical students and doctors who want you to be happier and healthier, right? And be, most importantly, be well-informed regarding COVID-19. Okay, great. So now this question is for all of you, whoever want to take it up. Uh, so how do you think that the current scenario will impact startup founders and the way they run their businesses. And what do you think, what advice do you have for those who might be very severely impacted? What should they be doing differently? So who wants to go first? I can go okay. first. Uh -huh. I'll, I'll go ahead, I'll go ahead. Okay. Uh, so basically, so basically uh, COVID-19 is, is, is it, it's a really interesting challenge for any business owner. I mean, any, anyone in general in the world, but I think for startup founders especially, I think this is a time where you have to dig deep and understand that to get through COVID-19, you have to be really creative. You have to have a lot of grit and tenacity. Uh, times will be, t now the environment is much more tough. So in terms of funding, we all know that a lot of investors are a little, uh, they're a little hesitant to kind of seeing what's going on in the markets. But right now, I think the biggest thing I would recommend to anyone is that if you're not on digital, you're, you need to get on it yesterday and, or today rather, right? And uh, if you're already on digital, you need to make new and novel ways of connecting with your customers and your, uh, I guess, your target audience. So doing your market research, understanding what you can do to reach these customers is going to be of paramount, paramount importance. And uh, regular tools won't work. You have, to, you have to understand, like, video is a new thing. So for example, at MedAngle, We've been experimenting with video a lot because video is the current hot, uh, it's the, the best way right now to target uh, your customers, your audience, right? So uh, you have to catch up and do things really fast to succeed in this environment. So going back to what I said earlier, if you don't have that grid, if you don't have that determination, uh, the following next 12 to 18 months or however long this uh, global crisis lasts, uh, it's really going to weed out the founders who were kind of wannabes or maybe didn't have the, the right intentions of getting into entrepreneurship because this will be a true test of character for I think all entrepreneurs internationally is that 
can you be creative enough? Can you be uh, nimble enough? Can you be resourceful enough to figure out how to uh, bring your business online, if you're not online, for example, or how to kind of create new avenues of revenue or new avenues of opportunity for your startup if you are digital? So that's a little- Anybody that, else wants to add to this? Yeah, no, I, I absolutely agree with uh, Azib. I think innovation, that's key in something like this. Um, if you don't innovate, I mean, essentially, I think pivoting in this situation would mean innovation. How do you offer what you are offering um, in a different, newer way? Or maybe, you know, you could probably come up with something else that, that is not your essential, like your main product. So, um, again, I think like uh, how you can innovate again is leveraging your assets, your network. I think right now networking would be key and collaborations would be key in any kind of business, you know, be it into community building, be it into creating that customer base for a later on period. But um, I agree with this point as well, that I think this crisis will actually weed out um, people who don't have the grit or if their business is not really up to par. You know, if your business was not doing well six months ago and it's not doing well right now, then I think it is time to rethink the whole, um, I guess, business. So this, this leads to another question. This virus is radically transforming shopping, production, as well as all business relationship habits, along with consumer behavior, because people are finding that there are easier ways to do things or buy things online. Which new trends do all of you think, in your opinion, are here to stay? in the long term post COVID? I feel like, um, so when we ran the survey about asking people, we asked them a lot of questions about how isolated they feel. And then in the end, we had this question, if when and if everything goes back to normal, would you still like to work from home? And if yes, how many days a week? And everybody was like, yeah, when things go back to normal, we'd still like to work from home at least twice a week. And that was like across the board, no matter what job function they're coming from, what position they're at, everybody likes that. And I think we need to get used to the fact that even when things go back to normal, it's not going to be the same. There will be, um, even in Pakistan, people will be working from home. Okay. Anybody who wants to add to that? Yeah, I'd like to add to what Hajra said that yes, the I mean, it will never be the same. It'll always be a new normal. And, um, you know, especially with youngsters, when we wanted to hire initially for ups as well, and now at Fempro as well, a lot of them didn't want, they weren't very eager about remote working. But now COVID has forced a lot of people to work remotely. And initially their concerns were always around productivity and, you know, family would be around. But people have learned how to discipline themselves and work from home. So that is a trend, at least in startups or smaller organizations that we see happening. And I also feel that the online shopping concept that was there is definitely going to, that's going to stay. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I do know of uh, people like, you know, elders, even in my family who didn't want to buy groceries or vegetables online now they find it so convenient that I don't think they will go back to that old way so I think online grocery shopping online shopping is a trend that we'll see that should grow yeah just to add to uh, Nadia here about the online therapy thing I think the hesitance that was there and uh, like will it work will it not work that is also ended because we've seen a surge in the number of clients and also the people who are okay with taking online therapy now because they do not have any option or the psychologists that they were going to, they're not available anymore at the clinic so that they have no other option. So I think that confusion of whether to go for therapy online, that is also like in a way it has reduced, but there's still more uh, like number of days to go with that. So people were already communicating, you know, they were using Skype yeah. or some such platform just for with family or friends yeah. but now it's become more formalized and people are now actually finding that communication can be used in business processes as well in communicating regarding your products and what have you Shahid, you haven't said anything for a while yeah, so <laughs> that makes that me nervous <laughs> There's something which is very obvious and uh, I guess this is the silver lining I'll say, you know, in this uh, COVID-19 that, you know, Pakistan is moving like towards digitization in a, in, with a great pace. Something which we couldn't, you know, expect from Pakistan to do that in like, you know, even in a couple of years. 
you know trying and testing different products different ideas it's it's just like you know 2009 recession which happened in like uh, or or i'll say 99 when you know all the investors were investing in us and you know trying different ideas so i guess digital platforms got an opportunity to be basically you know test each and every like you know all the different ideas that they can actually came up with so even uh, with us like we are we are you know coming up with different ideas that we are going to try like you know in in, in a, after like ramadan so we know that you know the schools won't be opening in like june or july even and you know we'll have like two two or three months more to basically try out different models so i guess this is uh, entrepreneurs should actually see this as an opportunity too if they ever wanted to go digital or if they ever wanted to you know do different things for example uh, there's there's one thing that you know even we are trying for uh, we we wanted to do that in mina region uh, as in in this middle east and you know ua and saudi and we we will we'll be doing that you know after like you know this um, this ramzan that we are going to do that in saudi and ua and try out different models so i i guess entrepreneurs can you know basically uh, try different models and you know with with people especially in pakistan you can see like you know professionalism you know even after working at home and that that's something like even i was surprised with my team as well that they are like you know very like disciplined you know even uh, i i in fact i think that their productivity has increased uh when they used to be here it was you know all about laughters and you know making fun of each other but you know once they are like social distancing is helping them you know helping them out in in, in a different way slack like has got like more decent these days it's it's all about you know basically work and work so i guess it, it's a good change that we we will see and uh, it's not uh, apart from that th- there's one thing that you know there's another trend that i was um, discussing with a friend of mine who works um, for cardi and basically working on the analytics i guess a garment industry and all these fashion industries will 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 have to suffer for for example uh, when we are at home we 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 got the time to basically ponder over over such things that you know we are wasting our time and you know our uh, i'll say our cash and everything over like you know luxuries which which never meant uh, you know something real to us so i guess these fashion industries who are marketing and you know making it a need uh, for humans are going to be like you know are going to be the ones who will get the major hit from this so that was my i think so people are not going to want to dress up anymore i doubt that <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean in the short term perhaps but you know the social distancing will only be for a limited period and once men and women start going out and meeting people they always want to look nice right yeah. so I don't, i don't see the fashion industry in the long term <laughs> sort of taking take like at least 6 to 7 months you know yeah. the mental thing and you know for a few months it will yes yeah so yeah uh hajra what about travel I mean I know you've sort of pivoted and you're trying to do different things but how long do you think travel will take a hit So unfortunately I think ye to pura saal like this entire year we're not going to be seeing anything in travel going back to the way it was and even in the next year when things do start to normalize a bit I don't think people would be well this is just what i think but i don't think people would be willing to travel to far off countries perhaps within their city or locally more than internationally and to add to your um, last question jahan about the trends i think one trend that will that will catch on is that of being lean so people whether it's being lean with your resources or your organizational structure people will organizations will want to go back to their scrappy beginnings and trial and error and how they used to do make do with like less and when resources were limited and all startups so startups have been doing that but i think generally even corporates and organizations are going to want to go back to being more lean okay. yeah anybody wants to add to that otherwise we have some questions coming in from participants so i'd like to take some of them on so there's one from iram who wants to know what do you people suggest for those people who want to start new businesses in whatever field do you think this is a good time to do that of course that's what i said mm-hmm. that if you actually <laughs> try different different models this is the time you know when you can actually you know yeah. like 
do it like you know as quick as possible you can try so basically you can see yourself especially if the business is online i mean you can see that you know the whole world is online right now although they are sharing their you know cooking tactics and all of that but they are online and you 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 have the best market you have the best opportunity right now to basically you know get your customers so i guess this is the best time for online business to try out different models fail as quick as possible because it's 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 at least going to last for like 3 to 4 months so i guess yeah you, you should do that yeah just, like just to add, yeah Sorry, just I'm to add to that okay i just okay. to add to that i think it's uh, what shri said is absolutely correct there is so many opportunities that you can tap into right now because even the competitors that you have in that industry are at the same level right so there it's literally anyone's game at this point in time it might be possible that after covid you might have an upper hand rather than they do regardless of how many months you've been in the industry so i think it's a perfect time to start right now nadia you wanted to add something Uh, so i would like to if they are about to start just you know from the perspective of uh, you know as long as they're online but uh, if somebody wants to get into right now like a, like she said a fashion related business so business even if it's online if it's luxury goods it's not going to be needed for a while so it's important right now to see what business is starting anything which is essential anything which is solving a current problem and you know i mean look around especially up your med tech um, content related digital uh, the things but when it comes to actual physical products they just need to see if they are falling in essentials because i mean i personally don't see a demand for luxury items at least in the next few months the very expensive ones so if somebody is planning to let's say start a business right now of, of exquisite jewelry maybe this is not the right time so as it in the healthcare yeah. field um, what would you suggest there are a lot of people looking at healthcare now and online education and areas such as those what would you uh, what do you see as the right trends for people to look at okay so uh, the way i see it we live in so basically the world was pre covid and post covid we're currently living in the post covid world we're still dealing with the ramifications so uh, uh, in pakistan like the current covid not post no i mean like i <laughs> right, like we're <laughs> no i i know but i'm saying it's like we're still dealing with the the with after effects and we will be for a long time right yeah. so the way i see it uh, at least in pakistan what was interesting is that overnight medical schools in Pakistan the vast majority were not prepared and did not expect that they would have to build an online platform right so i uh, we've seen a lot of them move to tools like zoom i know like i know for example dell university uses zoom and i'm sure many of the medical schools do as well so they quickly had to adapt to uh tools like google or zoom or whatever right but i think now going forward educators uh and anyone in education in general will understand that there is a huge role and that's education anything digital the future is going to be exclusively digital now because covid-19 has been a forcing factor for the whole world that if you're not digital you have to continue doing things no matter what and a lot of people will say that you know well an online lecture may not be as effective as an in person uh you know tutoring session or in person educational session and of course that that's a debate for a different time but regardless uh, because of this forcing factor we have to adapt to online tools and anything i i really believe that anything can be taught these days i mean If you go on YouTube, basically you can learn anything you want on YouTube. There's a there's a wealth, there's a plethora of information and things you can learn on YouTube. You got to learn how to sew, how to cook something, how to you know learn how to learn how to do surgery. Literally, these things are all available on the internet, right? So if you can focus on the digital aspect, whether that's education, whether that's the future of online work, whatever it, whatever it is, online and digital is the way to go. And this is the perfect time. So if you had any assumptions. if you had an idea that you were, that you were kind of itching to kind of see that you could get it out there this is the perfect time and especially for education and especially for content this this is the best time in my opinion because uh the traditional players who are being who are more offline they're still scrambling right uh, i forgot who said this but it's really it really is everyone's game right now you can you can bring your dream or your idea and make it a reality right now due to covid-19 so There's another question here from Sharoz who says what about startups who were looking to scale rebrand and plan to launch new features in Q2 but this pandemic has hit us what should they be doing right now I guess continue rebranding and you know planning the launch like uh, if so it depends on the startup as well as in if he's uh, I don't know if it was an online startup and they were like you know thinking to move forward with that then of course they should you know basically rebrand and do everything which is possible and you know continue doing that but i guess um, so so that's not 
So I guess that's Sharoz. His second question says that, you know, if your ID and business model is good, but it has got nothing to do with COVID, for example, home automation. For example, if, if you're talking about industries like home automation and, you know, all of these, um, I'll say robotics and, you know, basically hardware industries, you, you should, I guess, uh, instead of staying low, you should pivot. And th there's a lot of opportunity. For example, you can go for, you know, uh, um, making like inverters uh, or incubate um, uh, ventilators, for example, even uh, we tried, you know, making one ventilator in the beginning. So you can basically try out different products. If you, if you're good with home automation or if you're good with automation, you can basically try out different products, which will aid or, uh, or, you know, basically change the trajectory of COVID-19. So, yeah. Okay. Well, I'd, I'd like to add. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. So, you know, I think, I think everyone is talking about digital. But one thing that I would like to point out that there are lots of niches available, which you can go back to the traditional like method. Um, it doesn't essentially have to be digital. I was reading this case study about like this um, coffee startup. So they were giving like these Vietnamese coffee. Um, their business essentially tanked initially because they were focusing more on online sales and everything as well. They were partnering with different hotels. They were putting their coffee in different hotel rooms and, you know, different companies. Um, but because everything shut down for them, um, they thought that they could go online. So they set up their own e-commerce portal and everything as well. I mean, that obviously, um, that kept them afloat. But what they didn't, what they actually um, saw later on, that all these grocery stores, if they put their thing there, um, that actually boosted their sales tenfold. And within like two months time, they actually became profitable. So say if you are, you're making, I guess, iced tea, it could be an example. And you know, you're a new startup and you want to do something like this. Right now, people are actually looking for some sort of like, I guess, normalcy, if you would call it. So they want to, at least they want to go back to how it was before. And maybe these tiny things actually give them that sense of normalcy. So if you do place it there, right now, these grocery stores are actually, you know, hot selling points. So maybe if you have some sort of an item that you would like to stock up over there, um, then for sure, I think it's, it's a new avenue, it's a niche, and it's a different kind of product that people definitely would want to, um, you know, take a look into. Great. Um, there's another question here for you, Mustafa. Somebody wants to know, this is Mariam. Yeah. She wants to know, okay, why would somebody use Fitmap as opposed to the free videos that are available on YouTube. What is the advantage that you provide uh, as opposed yeah. to the videos that are already available? Absolutely. I think first and foremost, it's it's we give you access to that community and that ecosystem. You know, and and sure you can check out a video, but can you actually talk to that professional personally and get one-on-one -on -one advice? You know, and also we run like. Um, an online even class on Zoom where we have like hundreds of people on it as well. You know, so at the same time, you can actually connect with these people too. You can connect with us. And we're that one-stop shop for everything, like related to not just fitness, wellness and everything as well. You know, we connect to different people. In fact, I was thinking of hitting up Azib and Amna after this because, you know, they have things <laughs> to do with wellness and everything as well. And, and you know, we'd like to offer all these things as well. Um, so again, um, you know, sure, you can watch a video, you can, you know, do that. But if you're watching that video, do you know that while you're exercising, is your form okay? You know, so, but a trained professional, if you're taking a class from them online, they can actually tell you your form's not good, or you can't do that. You're, you're picking up weights in a certain way, which is not good for you, or your nutrition, or a bunch of, you know, a bunch of different things, and even stress management. You know, that, that has a lot to do with your like fitness and wellness. So and what I've seen is that especially startup founders have decided that collaboration is key during this period. So as you were saying just now that you would like to talk to Azib and Amna after this and see how you can do certain things together. I found that, uh, do you think this is just my imagination or is it true that startup founders have been very quick to collaborate to make sure that they all survive through this period. Anybody wants to take that on? Any examples that you may have of people that you're working with? Yeah, I mean, uh, again, for us, uh, just like Fitmap on its own, it's, I, I would, in like, I guess a nutshell, it is just the collaborative like platform. So what we do is we essentially just connect everyone, you know, 
Um, so we're essentially your sales and marketing team, um, you know, just an extension of that. So even right now, say um, Omna does it in you know, mental health. We run different like corporate wellness programs. So for us collaborating on that, on different mental health things, it definitely is essential. You know? So one of the reasons, again, an example is that we do run certain like workshops on it. So I would love to collaborate with Omna on that as well, that, okay, let's, let's go and, you know, let's work on this thing as well. So, so for sure, I think uh, that is, that is the way to go. I think it's very important to collaborate as well. We haven't done it with somebody uh, for now, but I'm always open to it because we're all in the same boat and we know how hard it is to start a startup. And in this kind of time when, when you, you already have a community with you and you know what kind of work everyone is doing and if each like every startup founder can benefit from it um, in their own respective industries why not collaborate so collaboration is always an option especially in, in a situation like this where you want to make sure that you're not using up all your resources to achieve your goals collaboration really helps because the kind of um, audience I might be getting, Mustafa might not be having that, or the kind of he has, I might not be having it. So collectively, we can definitely, um, you know, affect a lot of, uh, impact a lot of people out there. So it's a good option, always. So Ali Heather wants to know that if you're a pre-revenue early stage startup, what would you suggest they do? Because VCs have gone into hibernation. Pre-revenue. Right. I will. Uh, I think I. Are you giving anything to the revenue ones? <laughs> so, um, so my take on this is interesting. So, if you're pre-revenue, right? So, I, I think that there is a lot of different answers and a lot of different op, uh, paths that this project can take. But personally, um, I'm always a believer that you. So, if you're pre-revenue, focus on getting to revenue, right? So, if you can't do it today or tomorrow, but at least go out and see what can you do to get from pre-revenue to. How can you get your first customer? How can you make your first sale? What can you do right now, right? And it depends that, for example, if you're in the luxury goods business or whatever, maybe you're in a more uh, a vertical that's not amenable to sales today or tomorrow in the near future, right? But you can at least do the homework and get the groundwork doing. You, you can build the, that back end. You can build the app. You, you can do something. You can make wireframes. You can, you can do something right now to get ready to transform from peer revenue to post revenue, right? So this idea of we need a VC to do something or we need someone's money to get something done. I don't buy it. I, that's not something that I subscribe to, but you have the time and opportunity right now to change your status of your revenue, right? So I would focus on answering that question. What can I do to change that status? That's kind of my take on this. Nadia is wanting to jump in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Nadia. Exactly like to add to what Azib said. I've been there, have done it. So I would definitely say, bootstrap and in the initial stages unless you have revenues there is no point of taking investment uh, maybe if you you want to create a product that does require a certain amount of thing go for friends and family and uh, try and start small stay lean do the prototyping if you have you have this uh, a product plan with let's say 10 features just do it small do one feature at a time but you don't really need investment at such an early pre-revenue stage unless you've reached a certain stage because if you go for investment too early you will be giving away too much of your startup and you don't know what the future would bring so i would definitely uh, advise them to bootstrap and to test the market and not go for uh, investment at such an early stage any other opinions on this from the panel i agree to both of them because uh, even when you go to VCs, and even at this point where we are making revenues, they still think that um, there's still some loopholes in it or something like that. So pre revenue is always very difficult when it comes to investment. It's always nice to have a very lean model when it comes to employing people, when it comes to, you know, using your resources. Even when it was for me, for a year and a half, I was working with for a year, I was working alone and then I had interns working with me. So I didn't have an entire team working with me. And you know that, Jaha. And now I have a very small team that's working. But, and we don't have any um, investments in this or anything like that. We did have grants. So it's always nice. Your first, the first, whenever you're starting a startup, your idea should not be how do I get money from the investor, but how do I raise my own money through sales? And that is what a business is supposed to do. It's not supposed to feed off of someone else's money. It's supposed to make its own money. So that's just my two cents on it. 
and for scaling then you go and talk to an investor yeah then you definitely go because there there are points in your uh, startup where you do need that kind of amount which you cannot make from revenues and then you can ask and that would be a justified ask as well okay all right let's see are there any other questions otherwise i still have some okay i think we've covered most of the questions that people have asked mm -hmm. Oh yeah, there's one from uh, Maria who says, what suggestion would you give to a startup that got discontinued? So I guess it closed down due to a full-time job of the sole founder. Well, if, if you're doing a full-time job, um, I think it's very difficult to run a startup at the same time. You can try, but it really, I think a startup founder, as all these six people will tell you, uh, it requires a lot of time hours. and a lot of effort <laughs> and uh, you need to be totally immersed in it. So That's if you have a full-time job, it wouldn't work. <laughs> yeah. Actual blood, sweat and tears with 24 hours a day. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> literally. literally. It's, a life, it's a lifestyle. Entrepreneurship a life. is not something... You can't think Absolutely. that uh, you can't think that you're gonna come home from work and then work on it for four hours and go to sleep and then all of a sudden you're gonna yeah. be a billionaire. Never. That's not that's not how it works, right? You, yeah, it's, it's really a lifestyle. Yeah. Okay, there's an, uh, so I have a question. So with incomes falling, you know, you're hearing about layoffs and uh, you're hearing that people have had their salaries reduced. There is going to be a lot of unemployment due to COVID-19, at least in the short term, you know, six to twelve months. Mm -hmm. Do you think the demand for product are likely to fall in the coming months? And if yes, then what are the preemptive measures that you can take that will allow you to continue operations? This is a real problem. I, need, I mean, a lot of startups and even a lot of other businesses are thinking about right now that, you know, uh, with people having less access to money, are they going to want to buy the kind of products and services that uh, startups or other businesses are offering and what can you do? Do you see that there will be a fall in, in the kind of businesses that you have? Um, do you think there'll be a fall in the amount of business and how are you taking measures to make sure that does, doesn't impact you too badly? I, I guess um, uh, Yeah, she start uh, and then she can so I guess the whole point of pivoting was to basically, you know, take measures for, you know, this unforeseen, uh, you know, uh, condition that will happen. And there's one more thing that, you know, um, I guess we all forgot to mention was that it's basically the team that, uh, that's behind the startup or any company. So um, it, what we did initially was basically, you know, uh, coming up with these one-on-one uh, -on -one meetings with, you know, each and every employee and, you know, basically discussing the whole, like, you know, that's going to happen and, you know, and that's something where we have to survive like a family. So that's, that's the first step that, you know, all the entrepreneurs should do as in uh, you should have the complete confidence of your team and, you know, you should uh, give the liberation to the team as well to basically come up with different ideas and you can, you know, basically try those ideas as well. Uh, this wasn't like, you know, uh, doing online workshops or, you know, online camps wasn't my idea personally. It was my team's idea and they asked me that, you know, I should believe in them and they'll, you know, show me that they can execute that and they did it really well. So I guess, uh, first of all, you should have the confidence of your whole team. You shouldn't be fighting them and, you know... Um, I, I guess it's it's like it's it's something like you know uh, which you should like you know um, a family should treat like you know an uh, an unforeseen condition. Apart from that, you know, uh, pivoting is like you know pivoting in like you know in different ways can help you basically you know avoid such situations. So it's not like if you have like if you have found like one solution, you should you know stick to that. You should basically striving to you know, basically get more options and you know uh, we, we are also thinking to basically create employment you know during these days and that's going to be wonderful if we can do that right amna you were saying something yeah um so Jaha, it has affected business in a way because we were expecting that our sales would not be affected but obviously when people are not getting their salaries and when they're not getting 
where they're getting salary cuts, we cannot expect them to be taking a therapy session. Um, so that uh, we, we're still going to stick to the same model that we have because we, it works and it's going to work in the future as well. However, the number, the kind of markets that we were targeting initially, which was mainly social media, maybe we'll pivot from that. Uh, we'll be going to the corporates, we'll be going to different schools and different other markets that we're actually right now analyzing that would be good for um, the kind of therapy services that we are providing. So I think it's very important to identify those and work towards them in order to survive, be in the survival mode um, until things get better, for sure. Actually, Amna, do you think that um, even post COVID, I think the realization has come that people do need help to deal with stress, whether COVID or not? and that it can affect their performance. And so maybe Absolutely. the kind of people that you were trying to uh, mm. access earlier who used yeah. to say, oh, what, what is mental health and yeah. all of that yeah. are now going to be looking at this even more, they are going to you know, think of setting aside a budget for this kind of thing because yeah. it does affect yeah. business in the long term, right? Yeah, I think it has made our job relatively easier because, you know, I've been reaching out to a couple of them and the only responses I used to get was, we're not sure if this is something for us. Um, I don't think our team or our company needs this or something like that. But now they're actually reaching out to us and asking us to provide those services. So they've realized the kind of impact mental health has on all aspects of your life, regardless of uh, whether you have job security, whether you don't have it. Um, there are still people in really good organization that still suffer from mental health disorders. And until unless you treat them, their productivity will not increase. And that's what we'll be trying to advocate for a very long time. And that like this kind of has been an opportunity for us to actually like you know actions speak louder than words so now they're actually using our services and seeing the impact that it has had on their teams on their organizations so it really helps uh, with what we were previously saying for sure yeah so team building again is another part of all of this so mental health yes very important uh, team building is something that people didn't think could be done remotely or uh, that they didn't have to focus so much on unless, you know, it, it, it was just a few limited number of companies that yeah. spent money or time on team building, do you think that's going to change? Yes, so Jahan, uh, like you asked, um, even before it, uh, how much impact is this having on our sales? So with travel, obviously, no every company is now in survival mode. So nobody's going to be spending on employee retreats and what is essentially a luxury item, like Nadia said. So, um, but with team building, what we're seeing is that more and more people, more and more corporations are realizing that this is not just, uh, this isn't a luxury. This, uh, having their teams feel motivated, not letting them feel isolated, having them feel connected with the rest of their employees and like in teams and having them collaborate virtually is not a luxury item. It's, it's very necessary for companies that their employees are doing this effectively. And so uh, when we first, even when we first started seeing these two words put together, virtual team building, it just didn't make sense to us. We were like, oh, you should be in one space for team building to work. But now that we're doing more and more of these programs, we're starting to see that it's really effective and that people are craving this connection. And the more we do it, the more we're learning from it. Nadia, uh, you know, professional skills, especially for women uh, who didn't go out and get as much training as they should in order to make themselves, uh, you know, uh, have more access to the uh, job market, whether remotely or in person. Do you, do you think that they have now started getting used to remote training and that this will help them build their skills so that when things open up, even when things open up, they can, um, you know, put themselves forward for a lot of jobs that they probably didn't have the uh, qualifications to do earlier. 
Uh, so, Juhan, yes. Uh, initially, when, uh, you know, even with FemPro's trainings, when we put them out, although they were do at your own pace and they could just do it on their phone, just go through the content, watch it a little bit, watch the rest later. I mean, we got a very good response. But right now, I think we put up an ad uh, a week ago. We finally felt that, okay, let's put up a sponsored ad now that people have, you know, accepted or they've come into this a sort of uh, COVID routine and, you know, they would be ready. Uh, we've never seen such a great response as before. It's it's been phenomenal. I mean, like literally, it, it was it was just very very unexpected. So which does mean that women are adapting to technology and they are getting used to the idea of um, you know using online tools, whether it's for sales, whether it's for upskilling themselves or even trainings. Um, in fact, even if you keep the business side aside, uh, in my social circles and other areas as well, I mean, I've seen all these Quran classes on Zoom and Skype, which initially was always in person. And uh, and I'm seeing these dars, milads, um, you know, what not that's happening on Zoom. And even uh, people like my mom, or even women of a certain age who you know, to them, the technology was probably limited to a little bit of Facebook or WhatsApp. They know Zoom, they know how to click the link, they know the password, and they're, they're now attending these Pura Dar sessions. So it's not just upskilling professionally. It is a mindset change that we are seeing. So, um, you know, and even in terms of courses and upskilling themselves, we will see this change. And I'm, I mean, I'm very happy to see this, in fact, this big mindset change and again uh, some sellers we had who were initially very very hesitant that we have jewelry and our designs would be copied we just want to sell through offline channels and exhibitions they have started posting online and now they're talking about a website um, you know that fear that i don't want to scale i'll get copied that is changing so um yeah the tool the use of tools will increase we are bringing up some trainings inshallah with an international platform uh, of uh, trainings on social media tools let's see how that goes as well so okay so uh, one question for all of you uh, junaid wants to know that you know there's been an increase of online businesses and their posts that he sees on social media for different new e-commerce stores do you think it's all hype this is the new hype and that it will all die down post covid uh, i'll yes, jump in real quick so, or go ahead share go ahead share and then i'll zip. okay i i don't think so of course um it's like uh it's not like it's just like you know nadia said that you know everyone is coming online and you know the park the whole country is moving towards digitization of course there's like more uh opportunity for you know uh, companies who are coming up with e-commerce and you know all of these different business so i don't think you know they'll die down and uh, th this will you know this will continue you know even post covid 19 as it i don't think it's hype at all i think like i said before uh, covid is a forcing factor so for example before uh, for example, let, let's suppose that there's an uncle and he normally goes to, he goes out to the markets to buy what anything, right? Now, for example, suppose he has children who tell him that, hey, dad, you can simply go on this go on your phone, which you already use for WhatsApp or Facebook, and now you can actually get things delivered to your house through this, this interface, right? And I think that this example is uh, happening across the country, right? And that is a huge, it's not hype because it's opportunity that's happening in real time. So people are now understanding like before, when you're kind of forced to do something, it kind of becomes more of a normal habit in the society, right? So if people across the country understand that now I can simply use my cell phone for more than just, you know, pictures or messaging or whatever, I actually buy things and conduct business and earn and earn for my phone as well. I think across society, we're going to see some really dramatic changes uh, in terms of comfort and uh, usability, uh, which is going to lead to a lot of economic opportunity. So it's not hype. It's, it's just real opportunity that's coming up. Right. Okay, great. Anything else any of you want to bring up? Because we're through with all the questions. I think any, any uh, last statements any of you want to make? Any advice you want to give? Yes, so I, I'd, like to, I'd like to add on to like both the questions and just generic advice as well. I think um, firstly, what you asked that, you know, will people actually, um, since their, their job cuts, their pay cuts and everything as well, um, obviously we're, we're going towards another pandemic as well, which is economic recession. Um, I think a lot of like entrepreneurs and, you know, business people, what they need to see is that pivoting not only means that you need to just... Um, 
you know, reinvent your company, it should also mean that you have to be smart and you have to consider the global um, economic situation as well. You know, if we are hitting recession, obviously your purchasing power, it's, it's reduced. So if you are still surviving and say you do survive the pandemic, doesn't mean that, you know, you're actually, the product that you offer is actually going to be you know, in a lot of demand afterwards. So you have to be smart in, in terms of predicting the climate and everything as well. So maybe this could be a good point to actually just go back to the drawing board and see that maybe in the next two to three years, am I actually going to be in demand? Am I actually going to be able to scale? Either there are two things, either you make that revenue happen, you, you grow or you go into profit. I think for startups going into profit, it's not easy at all. I mean, I, a lot of pro like you know startups they actually don't profit at all like uber being like one of the main examples it's a giant but it's still not profitable um but again for for a lot of people like at least for fitmap like i had to sit down and i had to see that okay um saturation is also going to be a big thing so a lot of like e-commerce stores popping up it definitely will saturate a lot of things you having tons of access to tons of the same thing over and over including content is actually going to saturate like the market and you know lessen your chances as well so either um, I'm smart enough to reinvent in a way which even say the economic climate would actually allow me to still be in demand so it's just things like these that you should consider before even moving forward or reinventing yourself okay so one of the concerns that I have and I don't know how you're dealing with it because and I, I really wonder how big companies are dealing with it is when during a lockdown, so I know some companies are still under in operation and maybe limited teams, but a lot of people are working from home, ensuring the mental health and motivation that needs to continue during this time. Are any of you doing anything specific to make sure that the well-being of your teams is a concern for you? How are you dealing with it? How are you providing them with the kind of support that they might need? Because that might give some other people ideas on how to deal with this. So um, I, I take on that one. As I mentioned earlier that, you know, the first, uh, the first thing I guess, uh, you know, all the companies should do is basically, you know, communicate very properly to the teams and, you know, do such like, you know, one-on-one -on -one meetings and, um, uh, take their perspective and give them the uh, basically the liberty to you know basically question you ask you and you know stay in touch talk their personal you know stuff whatever they are going through and and, and just like you know give them more space to basically interact with you uh, as in the leader as in and, and all of the other members as well and uh, ab about the motivation I guess um, though in like you know in startups we we see that you know sales is basically the greatest motivation but you know, making a massive action plan, I guess, uh, will be the perfect thing for now. As in, you you basically make a huge plan, and then you basically decide that you, you have to basically do this, do this, do this. If you'll fail, uh, you know, doing that, you will do that. So basically, a massive action plan will you know keep up the momentum, and you'll you know basically keep pushing harder and harder and harder. So I guess the motivation will uh, basically rely on your action plan, whatever you will you know basically present to the team. Anybody else wants to add to this? I guess Amna should take on this. <laughs> I knew that would be against me. Um, I think uh, Shahir is absolutely right. Communication is key for sure um, because we've been so overwhelmed with the amount of work we had. We had to make sure that we are disciplined in it, right? Um, because working from home was a norm for us. I, for one, was one of the persons who did not like working from home because then your mom's calling you and then the bell's ringing and everything's happening at the same time. So... I wanted to be in the office, but since we've been at home, we've been working, we've made sure that we are disciplined. Uh, we make sure that we have our 9.30 a.m. calls. Uh, it's a 30 minute call. Uh, everyone discusses their progress, where they're stuck, if anyone needs help. We go step by step on the tasks that they have to perform. If they have anything that they want to input, then we have midday updates and day and some reason, stuff like that. And also I'm always a message away. So that kind of freedom that they have, that they can connect with me at any point in time and can communicate whatever issues they're having with our clients, with our um, teams or anything else, 
they can reach out to me immediately. So that kind of alleviates the pressure that they might have of, you know, managing it on their own while what they were doing initially. So I think that's really helped. Apart from that, we've made sure like obviously since it's Ramzan, so we've reduced the number of hours that they're working in. And, okay. and we've also kept, because this is something that I've noticed that even when you're working with different corporates or other organizations, when you're working from home, so even at 9 p.m. at night, if a work uh, work uh, thing arises, it has to be taken care of at that point in time. And I, that should not be the case. Uh, when you're working from 9 to 5, then it should be from 9 to 5. So we made sure that our work ends at the time where we allotted it, and then we do not communicate um, regarding anything work-related uh, after those hours, because then that's your family time and you need to spend time with them as well. So that's one thing that we've made sure that we do. Anyone else wants to add to this? So I completely agree with Amna. We've also like, it's very important to structure the day and not just the day, but like your week, because when you're working from home, it's all just like, feels like one day is mingling into the next and it's really hard. So structuring is very important. And for us, what we're doing is with these uh, virtual business games and team building activities, we're just playing amongst ourselves to perfect it and also feel good about it. Yeah. Nadia, uh, how are you, uh, are you remaining connected with all the uh, women on your network? And is there anything specific you're doing that uh, would make, uh, you know, make it possible for them to continue to think the way that you want them to as entrepreneurs? Because, you know, pe uh, women get so, so bogged down with all the family work, the household, and now with work from home, their husbands are home, the children want their time because no school. So uh, is there anything specific you're doing to, to make sure that they keep uh, themselves focused on, on their businesses as well? Uh, so what we've been doing is basically the online communication through the community and there are certain sellers that have been uh, closed in our closed network. So with them, we're in touch through WhatsApp as well and, the, and other means knowing what they're doing, what they're up to. But I mean, naturally, given that most of the women that we work with have micro businesses or small businesses and they run them from home. And given this current COVID situation where everybody's home, the kids are home, the families are home, a lot of them have actually even put their businesses on back burners. We are motivating them, we're providing opportunities where at least they can share their links or keep, you know, so that it's like a constant reminder not to forget that because, uh, you know, for a lot of them, family has taken over as priority and it's obviously understandable, especially because there is no house help available as well. And with everybody home like even for me I never really used to cook so much as before this lockdown I had support and now I feel I'm spending a huge part of my day in the kitchen and and there are women others who are probably facing the same so we we're trying to do these little activities like share your link follow each other's pages uh, the ones we're closely in touch with we stay in touch via whatsapp uh, again we they have the option to message us on the page but these are the smaller ways that we are staying in touch and now the trainings that we want we will be starting after ramzan that is again like like a sort of a push for them to remember to think of their businesses and at least focus on the social media strategy if nothing else so they you know they, they even if they're not very operational the brand is not lost during this time because a lot of them are obviously unable to continue operations uh, I mean, for obvious reasons, the, the family effect as well. And plus, uh, the ones which were doing handmade crafts, their artisans are not accessible, the what they, that they work with, you know, the smaller communities due to the lockdown. So for, I think, women, it's been, the small sellers has been a particularly tough time. Okay, I think we've had a very good discussion. So many new ideas have come out of it. I think you guys are are totally amazing what you're doing right now and a lot of founders will have learned how to cope during this time uh, please stay safe and continue to do what you're doing because i think it's all very important you're all in areas where you're helping whether it's uh, helping kids with their education whether it's team building whether it's mental health you know information misinformation is something that really is is getting to people fitness and support for women. I think all of you are in areas where you you are doing what you can. Oh, there's Kumail. Kumail has a question. Mm -hmm. We can't not take a question from Kumail, okay? <laughs> uh, 
comments one of our it's actually a comment <laughs> okay this yeah. is a comment he says stay strong and keep going stay relevant and survive yeah we're all trying to do that <laughs> remote social distancing is my <laughs> biggest challenge amna i think i have to take one of your online counseling sessions you're more than Honestly, welcome jaha <laughs> yeah. all of you are <laughs> Okay, thanks a lot, guys. It was great talking thanks, to you. Uh -huh. Keep in touch. Let me know if there's anything you need from me, and I think thanks, I will now head home.